Do you want to know how to hire your perfect match virtual assistant, a rock star virtual assistant? Well, a big part of that is in the interview. And so today I'm going to show you my favorite interview questions to ask in an interview when I'm looking to hire a rock star virtual assistant. Hey, if you're new around here, my name is Jen Lehner. I'm a digital marketing and system strategist, and I help solo professionals rapidly grow their businesses by outsourcing the smart way and incorporating smart systems into their business. And today I'm going to show you my favorite interview questions. So let's dig in. Okay. So by the time an applicant gets the interview with me, they have already cleared lots of vetting steps along the way. So I know that by the time they get to the interview, they are qualified at some basic level. The interview, what's so great about the interview is that it gives you the opportunity to dig in at a deeper level and really just make that connection that only having a person to person talk can really give you, you know, human to human, because it's during those moments and during those conversations when the hair on the back of your neck might stand up because something feels so right or something is gnawing at you because it doesn't feel right, but you can't really put your finger on it. And by the time we get to a certain age, we all start to learn to trust those signals more and more. So I will say when you get into the interview and you have those feelings, don't brush those aside. Those are very, very telling. And for me, really, that is the meat of the interview or those nonverbal communication signals that you're getting. So that's what I really love about the interview. Having said that, the interview is not the end all be all. For example, I was once hiring a graphic designer and I got all sorts of wonderful applicants who submitted really great work. And there were two people who really submitted just stellar, like I loved their work. And so in the interview, the first candidate, we're going to call her Veronica. So Veronica, again, her work was amazing. And when we get, got into the interview, she was so charming, so charismatic, and we really hit it off. So I felt really great about Veronica and thought, mm, this is probably going to be the person who I hire. So then I interviewed the next person who submitted great work. We'll call her Gertrude. Gertrude was painfully shy. Everything was a yes or no answer. And I would call that interview pretty much a bomb interview. Like it did not go well, but something told me that I really needed to give them both a shot. So what I did was I brought them both into a trial week and we'll talk about that at some point in another video, but I like to bring well, like at least two or three people into a trial week so I can compare people's work and their efficiency and so forth. So they both went into a trial week and right off the bat, the difference between the two applicants was alarming <laughs> because the person who I had such a rapport with, she didn't communicate in a timely fashion. She didn't produce her work in a timely fashion. And really nothing was happening with her during the trial week. The work wasn't getting done. And the other candidate, the person who bombed Gertrude, she was crushing it. She was turning out work really, really quickly. It was outstanding work. And so of course, Gertrude is the one who I hired and she stayed with me for about a year and a half. And while she was with me, she just did amazing work. So again, the interview is not everything. Now, as far as the interview question goes, of course, you could just Google interview questions and you're going to get some great ideas, but I wanted to share with you the interview questions that I asked time and time again, and I'm going to explain to you why I like these questions. So the first question, and I love to start interviews this way because it's such an open-ended question. And that is, tell me about yourself. And in fact, I always ask this question back in my corporate days when I hired people, because it gives the applicant an opportunity to share information that number one, you may have never thought to ask. So they might share something with you that reveals hidden talent that they didn't list on their application. You know, maybe there wasn't an opportunity for them to tell you that they were an ultra runner, ultra marathoner. To me, that's informative. Like if I have a person that has the fortitude and the strength to do a 50 mile race, I'm kind of interested in that. 
I never would have thought to ask if that was something that they did, but also it can be informative because the applicant might share with you personal information, um, things about them personally that would be informative in terms of like their availability given other responsibilities they might have in their life. Okay. So I love that question. Second one is what do you know about my business? And the idea there is if they're really interested in working with you by now in my process, they have had plenty of opportunities to Google me. And at that point, if they were really excited, you know how it is. If you're excited about something, you're going to Google it. If you're applying for a job and you want to know everything about it. And if they don't know anything about my business, they're pretty much automatically disqualified. And then I ask, why are you interested in this job? And that speaks for itself. What kind of work have you done in the past year? What do you enjoy working on? And more importantly, I love to ask, what is not enjoyable to you? What are your primary skills and how would you rate them? Are there talents and skills you have that I haven't asked about? And lastly, I end the interview much like I began the interview with a very big open-ended question, a big broad question. And that is, is there anything you'd like to tell me about yourself that I haven't asked you about today? So I hope that helped. If you have any questions about interview questions or anything else, just post them down below and I'll be sure to come around and answer them to the best of my ability. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, if you're watching this before March 1st, 2022, make sure you click the link down below or right here to join our Solopreneur to CEO live workshop series. It's going to be March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And we're going to be talking all about how to find your perfect match virtual assistant and create more freedom for you in your life and in your business. See you soon.